the power of the seed. A farmer must show up no matter what, rain or shine, every season. The farmer must plant, the farmer must nurture, the farmer must harvest. Good morning, my name is Kim Russell. I am the mayor pro tem here in Rochester. And who would have thought a farmer's daughter that's dyslexic, that was tall and thin and wore cat eye glasses when it wasn't cool, would be standing here today to talk to you about the power of the seed. Everything on earth starts with a seed. Do you know what the largest living organism is? It's a sequoia, better known as a redwood. The seed, however, is the size of a pepper flake. So the power within that seed is amazing. I believe that the master gardener has planted a seed inside of each one of us that's unique to every one of us. And if it doesn't grow to its full potential, that the earth will miss something very special. My parents taught me that it takes sacrifice, discipline, and work ethic to plant a good crop. Healthy seeds takes a gardener to show up even if the field does not see progress. I remember as a little girl, life was difficult, and I would pray to the good Lord. Lord, help me find a husband that would adore me, love me unconditional, and find me beautiful. At the age of 15, I moved to a new house. The bus stop was at the end of the driveway. He was 16. I did not notice him. I was walking, you know, planting seeds is risky. And so I was uh, walking to a football game to one of my friend's house. And there's this curly-haired boy whizzing by on a bicycle saying, do you want to go to the football game? And I walked really fast because I was scared. I said, sure, I'll see you there. I had no idea what his name was. Well, he gave me such sweet attention. And I would pray, Lord, help me find a husband that would think I was beautiful that would adore me, love me unconditional, but do not make it that curly-haired boy on the bike, <laughs> Jeff Russell. Well, God has a good sense of humor. Every word we speak, every action we take is a seed planted for harvest. I remember one time on a family vacation, we were in Virginia, and we went to see Jefferson's home in Monticello. And the, veg the original vegetable garden is there. So I bought many packets of seeds, and so the next season, I was thinking, what happened to those vegetables? Well, I was cleaning a few months later, and I found those packets of seeds. And it reminded me that good intentions don't grow fruit. So, you know, you can plant, ta you can plant, plant tainted seeds as well. Jeff and I had a goal at the age of 30 to be totally debt-free by the time we were 60. I planted a tainted seed. We were on a budget, and I made a large personal purchase. And you know, the time that you plant the seed, the consequences don't happen that moment. Overindulging, white lies, being unfaithful, those seeds take time to grow too. So the credit card bill came in, and I did not have enough money to pay for the bill. So I was tempted to hide my plant in the dark. But the master gardener encouraged me to go to the light, to confess, to deal with the problems head on. Even when you feel shame or your embarrassment, that you need to listen to the master gardener because there's power in those seeds too. It's important for us to plant a variety of seeds, tomatoes, carrots, squash, discipline, patience, joy. Life is messy. There's rain, and there's trauma, there's discouragement, but oh, that's where the beauty and the character come in. Think of organic versus modified. Imagine an apple tree in a modified environment. The trunk is straight, the apple is big and red, but when you slice that apple open, there are no seeds to plant for the next season. 
Now imagine an apple tree in an orchard. It's beautiful. The trunks are knotted and twisted. That's where the beauty is. The apple may be smaller. It may be scarred. But when you slice the apple open, it's juicy and sweet. And their seeds are plump, ready to be planted for the next season. You know, you can be the gardener for someone else's seeds. About two years ago, we had a 15-year-old girl from the Pocot tribe come live with us. She came from a dry, poor land in Kenya, where they still circumcise young girls. But I believe that an enormous seed was planted inside of her and her sisters, and that they can change their people's future forever. Nurture the seeds that you have been given. You know, um, there's a time that we have to forgive ourselves. There's a time where um, we have to uh, figure out what hinders us, what suffocates us, because we have to have room to grow in our garden. If we don't, we can't grow to our full potential. So what are your weeds? What are your bad habits? You know, there's never a perfect time for marriage, for family, for vacations, dreams, whatever it is. But nurture what you have in your hand. There will be more seasons. Those weeds and those bad habits, they could be addictions. They could be wanting to be in control of everything, being too busy. And if we don't get to the root of the problem, those weeds will pop up again and again. So we, ne we need to manicure our garden. We need to make sure that we take care of those issues. Now, we worked in the field all season long. It's time for harvest. We have labored. And I believe that the, the master gardener wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. But we've got to examine our fruit. The field is ripe. It's full. But it must be picked. The farmer must show up or the fruit will rot. What does your fruit look like? Have you planted kindness? You get kindness. When you plant bitterness, you receive bitterness. In other words, when you plant a bean, you get a bean, not a watermelon. There are three important parts to harvest. Number one, enjoy it, then store it, and then dry it. The master gardener wants us to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Think of corn. Eat it, savor it, enjoy that corn. But then store a third of that harvest for those hard, barren winter months. And then lastly, Dry the best fruit from your plant, from your most producing plant. It may seem sad because it's going to shrivel and dry, but oh, that's the breath of life. That's new seeds, second chances. It's our responsibility to plant for the next harvest. Success is only good as your successor. As Mayor Pro Tem here, this is my last year. What does it mean to dry my seeds? To give it to power, prestige, title, and pour encouragement into others so that they have the courage to do what is necessary for the future. What season are you in? What seeds do you have in your hand? Is it time to plant? Is it time to nurture? Is it time to harvest? The farmer must show up no matter what rain or shine. What is the power inside of your seed? Thank you.